All right, folks, how are we doing? It's Shabash. Welcome back to the channel. It's Orna again, and we're taking you through part two of our beginner guide series for the warrior class progression. We're looking at itemization and gearing options from tiers one to 10. In part one, we've already covered the classes, specializations, and pets, which choices you'll want to consider for the warrior class, so be sure to check that one out, link in the description. My main goal regarding recommending items for warrior classes in this video it's going to be around easily attainable items that are in the core game. So of course there's going to be limited event items which are best in slot, but just bear in mind I'm going to be recommending items you can get at any point during the year. I've also posted a written guide on the Orna Legends website, so for easy picture references, link in the description. Let's light a fire under this and get into it. Tier 1 with the Warrior. We're going to be using the Orna Guide, of course, it's the best resource on the game. And let's open up the items database. Filter by Warrior, let's go tier 1 and let's check out weapons first. Now at tier 1 your upgrades are going to come really fast, basically anything which is an improvement in attack stat over your currently equipped weapon. You start off with this rusty sword, 5 attack, even a short sword doubles your attack basically. So, so a solid tip is actually to check shops that you see in the world. They can sell things like spears, hammers, 18 attack is pretty good at a level 1. If you see Bandit Lord try and take them down for the axe. But the actual best weapon at tier 1 is not a tier 1 weapon at all. It is a tier 2 weapon which can drop at tier 1. It's the Fallen Warrior's Sword. This thing is 50 attack. Absolutely ridiculous. Even a broken version of a Fallen Warrior Sword is better than anything else you're going to find. And it's dropped by these guys here, the Fallen Warriors. So these things do appear at tier 1 as I said. So if you see one of these guys, take them down as soon as possible. The sword is going to carry you for many, many levels. Alright, let's check out armor. I'm just going to go... I'm just going to filter for, for all the armor slots because there's not really much to talk about. Uh, we're in the wrong tier. Anything that, anything that you can find in shops that you can wear or from killing goblins are going to be your main source of, of armor. Just stick anything on really. Uh, we'll make a summary of what the real best are but you're going to reach tier 2 pretty fast. The other important thing at tier 1 actually is uh, accessories. Is these amulets. They give 10 attack which is pretty mental. At tier 1 it's double the amount of attack your starting weapon has. You can equip two of these, remember, and you can buy them from shops. So again, shops are really good. This is where the traveling advantage comes in honor at the beginning when you don't have any shops built yet. Keep an eye out for these amulets, buy them if you can. So we'll just go over the summary of tier one, Fallen Warrior Sword and amulets are the big are the big ones. Let's move on to tier two and I'll just leave accessories on actually because it's the same idea. At tier two, you have an amulet upgrade, which is your silver amulet, and you can see it's got 20 attack. So again, same same principle, if you see shops, try and buy a silver amulet, it's really solid attack boost. And at tier 2 again, the best weapon is again going to be the, the Fallen Warrior Sword, this thing's absolutely insane. If you haven't found a Fallen Warrior Sword yet, it's the same kind of principle, any weapon that improves your attack, just equip it as soon as, as, soon as you can. Keep an eye out for shops, you can buy things like claymores, uh, great sword as well. Great sword is probably the second best thing at this tier if you don't have a fallen warrior sword. You can buy these in shops. Armor wise, it's going to be a full set of rune gear. These are dropped by the rune knights and they give a good balance of uh, defense and resistance actually. As I said, you're going to be going through these levels pretty fast so anything that's an upgrade just stick it on. Final thing to mention at this tier is going to be our offhand. We can equip an offhand at, at tier 2 which we're going to get a small attack boost and that's the sidearm. You can find these in shops as well. 8 attack, why not? Easily upgradable in blacksmith. So buy a few, use one and upgrade another one to a, for a couple of levels. So going over the summary. For tier 2 it's quite simple from tier 1, pick up the best fallen warrior sword, keep killing them because if you get a, if you get a famed legendary or ornate fallen warrior sword you're, you're laughing. Uh, silver amulets in shops as well. By the end of tier 2 you can probably start building one or two shops and restocking is fairly cheap. I'd say with all the gear that you find around these levels, if you dismantle like half of it and sell half of it, you'll have enough gold to build a shop and restock them so you can find some amulets. Okay moving on to tier 3 weapon, we're gonna love shops again. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna suggest you go for the halberd and I want to bring attention to the halberd because it's another really easy item to get. You can buy these in shops there. You should quite easily find them and you can upgrade them quite easily. It's a really cheap strong upgrade. Otherwise at tier 3 if you've joined a kingdom already and you can take down Dracon he drops a fairly decent sword. The Ankh and the Demonic Blade these drop from bosses you'll be able to see in the wild quite regularly. They're both really nice just you won't have as much materials to maybe take them to levels 4 or 5 in the blacksmith as you would the halberd but um, yeah depending Depends what you find. Yeah, the best weapon at this tier is a Twilight Blade, but this is dropped by the Twilight Knight, which only appears in uh, gauntlets. So you might not have any gauntlet keys, or I kind of suggest waiting until tier 
four or five to, before I start any gauntlets, but statistically this is the best weapon at this tier. Okay, moving on to accessories, and guess what I'm going to suggest again? Two or three amulets. <laughs> Mithril amulet this time, 30 attack, again really solid, two of these equipped. I recommend these amulets over anything that give uh, experience, like monster tombs for example, because if you're killing things twice as fast as you would with these amulets on, compared to having a monster tomb equipped, the experience gain increase from those tombs are nothing in comparison to killing things twice as fast. And by this point, yeah, you should have a few shops. Okay, so let's check out headgear. So if you have the opportunity and you found Sala, the NPC in the world, and if you do both of her quests, you'll get her hood and uh, and her robe, which give solid bit of attack, a lot of defense. The quests are quite easy. You can see the quests, you just need to give her 20 pure alls, which you can buy in shops, by the way. So complete the quest, you get a nice boost of attack. If not, you can wear a mithril helmet, but, but yeah, recommend keeping your eye out for Sala. Same story for the armor, she drops the her robe, well she gives you her robe on completing Beast of the Sea quest, which is defeating the Lizard Lord, which you can find in gauntlets by the way, or by water. Otherwise it's a similar story, wear what you can. Yeah, for legs, if you're near water you might find some Lizard leggings, if not, Mithra leggings are absolutely fine as well. Finally, we can talk about a small upgrade to our offhand. And we gain these offhands from the arena actually by killing other players in area control or in the arena. If you're wearing a fallen warrior sword and a few amulets, you'll definitely be able to kill a few people in the arena quite easily with the attack button. So all of the arrows, they give 12 attack and they have some nice status effects. Obviously, if you've got fire arrows, they cause burning. Ice arrows cause frozen, etc. If you find a quality one, but they're not going to last us very long because at tier 4 we, we pick up the, the Whisper. Yeah, so in summary, try and complete Salah's quest if you can and pick up the Mithril amulets from the shop. If you find a nice boss weapon at tier 3, it's pretty nice. Use a whetstone and a fine whetstone as well on whatever weapon you find at this level. You'll have plenty of gold by now to buy whetstones and fine whetstones. And let's go to tier 4. We're on offhand, so we'll stay on offhand and we'll talk about the Whisper. You can see the attack boost on this thing from arrows are pretty insane. These come from shops as well. I recommend you buy all of these that you can. Yeah, so I recommend equipping one immediately and then putting one in the blacksmith to like level 4 or 5 and then swap them around or have two going in the blacksmith. Once one's reached level four or five, you can put that on. That will take like a day. And then get the other one up to level 10. Buy everything in your shops that look as if they're gonna dismantle into iron and take one of your whispers to level 10. You're gonna get like 80 attack from it. It's, it's pretty insane. Yeah, so in the early to mid game, we're still kind of building towards maximum attack. We're not really worried about ward until later on. So let's check out our tier four weapon. And um, by this point, a good option is the Bone Crusher. Drops from the Undead Golem, which, which are quite common. A couple of other options, the Elven Sword you can buy in shops and the Fomor sword if you're in a kingdom already drops from Fomor. Also the Fomorian sword you'll see plenty of these drop so you might get a nice ornate. Just remember to always use whetstones as soon as possible as well. Buy a stack of them. Quickly check in accessories you can guess what's coming. Platinum amulets are tier 4 and they give 40, 40 attack each. You can find them in shops. Mimics as well can drop amulets by the way so always kill mimics whenever you see them. The other things I'll mention here are the elemental belts are quite useful for providing your elemental resist. Uh, the main use for them actually is the earthen belt for raiding against titan but that's a very specific scenario. I really recommend the, the amulets. Okay let's look at heads and legs here. For these we're going to recommend the drake items which drop from the small dragon. They're not that much better than the Fomorian leggings as well, which just whatever the best quality you can find. Stick that on, upgrade a few levels as well. I'm talking at like level four, five, six in the blacksmith, it takes up to a day. Armor wise, I want to mention here is the Yeti coat, the first time we come across a Yeti. And this is a really solid item if you can see them. Yeah, the Yetis appear in snow weather, obviously. Really hard to get hold of, but if you see them, definitely upgrade this bad boy. It gives you water resistance and makes you immune to defense and resistance down, single arrow, single down. So I think in summary, by tier four, you're gonna be hanging around long enough to upgrade a few items in the blacksmith and you're gonna be killing enough mobs to drop higher quality items as well. So, so just whatever you can find. The Whisper is the big one because you can guarantee that in the shops platinum amulets as well okay so we've hit tier 5 which is level 100 if you've not joined a kingdom by this point i really recommend you do so from here on in a lot of the best equipment at your tier is going to be gained from kingdom raids starting with the tier 5 weapon which i'm going to recommend you go for is the meteor hammer which drops from star lord yeah this thing 130 attack really outperforms anything else at this level on top of that you get 50 hp which gets doubled in pvp pretty nice uh, anything else to mention don't think so and as long as the kingdom's obviously active enough, you're going to be getting quite a bit of solarite to hopefully first find a nice quality meteor hammer and then being able to upgrade at quite a few levels as well. I think most of the other decent weapons at this level actually only drop from time limited event raids like this Slayblade, Dawnbreaker, Caroling Loot has some nice decks. These drop from monthly raid bosses, so of course if you're in tier 5 during those raids, try and pick up a nice weapon. Otherwise, Star Lord will always be there for you. Okay, let's talk about accessories that we can find at tier 5. 
I can't believe there's no amulet upgrade at tier 5. So most likely you're, you're going to continue wearing those platinum amulets. But, but I do want to quickly talk about some really useful accessories that you're going to want to pick up. Again, these drop from time limited event raids. But normally at least there's a few chances throughout the year to pick these up. And you'll be using these items all the way through tier 10 as well. So first one to mention is the Ring of Day here. You can see it prevents defense and resistance getting lowered from single and double arrow downs. Super useful. Similar thing to the Ring of Night. It stops your attack and magic getting lowered. The main difference between these rings and the Arch Gadget and Arch Gizmo, which kind of do the same thing, is the Arch Gadget and Arch Gizmo don't prevent the temporary downs. Okay, let's talk about legs. And I actually recommend these adamantine leggings because it's quite easy to pick up a nice quality one and the, and the material is really easy to find as well. So you should be able to upgrade this quite easily. I don't recommend Meteor Leggings as a priority. I'll come on to that in a second. You have Jolly Stockings and these Surter Boots as well, which are really amazing at this level if you're making an alt. But again, they come from event rates. All right, so let's go to the chest slot. And here I'm going to recommend the Star Lord armor because it also gives HP. So I would kind of concentrate on upgrading your weapon and this armor with the Solarite. After that point, you can obviously upgrade your legs if you get some nice ones. And for the head slot, depending on if you find a nice quality piece, you can go for the Adamantine helmet, Meteor helmet from Star Lord, or another option are antlers from the arena. These give a balanced defense and resistance, so you can pick up some nice resistance in this slot to counteract the lack of it in other slots. Finally, let's look at our offhand so the main offhand option i want to talk about here is the mirror which you find in the arena in pvp because it gives you a lot of mana so for world farming and gauntlets the mirror is really nice for efficiency allowing you to cut down on the amount of mana potions you need to use otherwise i'll probably recommend to stick with the whisper which by this point you should have to level 10 or even master forge or demon forge if you get lucky in the arena you might pick up some nice arcane arrows or some nice blight arrows by that i mean like legendary or ornate if you do get lucky they'll become a nice upgrade from your whisper so in summary, I'll reiterate the fact that you kind of want to be joining a kingdom by this point and really hitting Star-Lord as hard as possible. Try and find a nice hammer, some nice armor, smash folk in the arena. Let's move on to tier 6. Okay, for your tier 6 offhand, I recommend the same at tier 5, the mirror and the whisper, or some nice arrows. So at tier 6, we have our final upgrade in our attack amulet line, which is the uh, adamantine amulet, giving us 60 attack, which is actually pretty massive, and we're going to double that, obviously. I still feel at this point in the game, the easily attainable attack from these amulets are super good. For our tier 6 weapon, I'm going to recommend this Basilisk Tooth which drops from the giant Basilisk. You'll easily find the Basilisk boss in wooded areas and in boss dungeons. Really solid attack. The other axe I'd recommend is the Titan Axe from Raiding Titan. I will point out this Oxen Axe that drops from the Behemoth boss. Please do not upgrade this, it uses hardened steel which is one of the most annoying materials in the game to get hold of and you'll want to keep hardened steel for upgrading your Venom weapon later on which is your main experience gaining weapon. So please don't upgrade the Oxen Axe even if you get like a 200% one. Moving on to the head slot, I'm going to be recommending the Titan Helmet so please join a kingdom if you haven't already. Pretty solid defense and some nice HP as well. These two things come from event raids. For our chest slot, I'd also recommend the Titan Armor. Or for a bit of variety, I can recommend this Wyvern Chestmail, which drops from dragons. It gives you some nice dragon resistance and is more balanced towards resistance. Otherwise, you go with Titan stuff again. And it's a similar story with the legs as well. Ideally, you go with the highest quality thing that you can find. Okay, moving on to tier 7 weapons. I want to recommend the Pale Blade, which drops from Baylor Elite Raid. You have really high attack, a little bit of HP, and the Baylorite material that you need to upgrade is really easily attainable as long as you're in an active kingdom, so you'll really be able to juice up one of these. I don't recommend this wolf thing because it requires wolf blood, which is really rare to get. One other thing to mention is the High Fremorian Sword. You're probably going to be killing plenty of High Fremorians, so there's a good chance you'll find an ornate one of these. The largest attack weapon at this tier comes from the first Horseman's Spear, which is a world raid boss. It does require hardened steel to upgrade, but if you get a nice legendary and ornate, Taking it to level 5 or 6 might make things a lot easier for you. We've then got a couple of really nice dragon axes that drop from Tiamat and from Typhon, which Typhon only appears in Gauntlets by the way. Really nice attack stat on both of these and there's a good chance you'll pick up a nice legendary or an ornate one. So always kill those dragon bosses. Finally for weapons I'll just mention the Crystallis which drops from the Enlightened Prince in Gauntlets. This can be quite useful in Gauntlets and Dungeons because it prevents any of your stats getting lowered. So you can use something like Golden's Fortitude without having your attack stat drop. And guess what, you can leave Dungeons to change gear. So you can use the Crystallis to buff up on the first floor and then switch to your main weapon to complete the Gauntlet. In our head slot, the Great Antlers as a tier 7 arena drop are really nice, giving you some solid balanced defense and resistance. Otherwise, Pale Helmet from the Baylor Elite Raid gives us super nice defense and HP. Similarly for our legs, I recommend these from the Baylor Elite Raid again. Other options to look out for are some nice High Primorian leggings. Colossal leggings as well can give you some pretty high defense. If you see a Fey Dragon raid and get a nice drop to be a really interesting piece, it will increase your pet's base action rate by 2%. For our chest piece, there's a new Great Yeti at tier 7, which gives us the upgraded Yeti overcoat. Super nice if you can find one. Otherwise, it's the same mobs we're killing Baylor Elite, 
Hypermorians, Colossuses. In a rough hand, you can probably stick with your Mirror or your Whisper, but if you pick up a nice balance left after completing the quest and maybe you get a good one from a dungeon, it can be a nice pickup giving us a little bit of ward going into Atlas Vanguard as our tier 8 class with a little bit of attack. Finally, I want to mention two really important accessories you can pick up at tier 7. Anku's Ring prevents you from getting cursed, so you can use a skill like Mimic's Mischief without getting cursed and it prevents you from falling asleep. Ring of Anwen prevents the four main element status afflictions happening to you, frozen burning, paralysis and rot. Really important you pick both of these up so you can use them in PvP situations as needed. Quality doesn't affect them. Quality doesn't affect these in any way, just use the shiniest one you find. Otherwise in the world you'll probably stick to your amulets. So in summary, picking up that Pale Blade from Baylor Elite will be huge. Otherwise, chase those dragons. Just bear in mind those dragon axes have the innate dragon element on them. You cannot change them by enchantment. You can only change them using the Arcanic Affinity abilities. So for that reason, Pale Blade is probably your best pickup here. Otherwise, get used to swapping your accessories out depending on what content you're doing. Raiding, gauntlets, world farming, or PvP. And moving on to tier 8 accessories, you can start finding Cursed Monster Tomes from Fafnir Boss. And it's kind of at this point in the game where experience really starts to slow down. Before now I don't recommend picking up monster tombs because because in real terms the extra attack from amulets are actually going to improve your experience rate more but the thing you need to know for experienced monster tombs the experience gain rate is affected by quality so try and find legendary and ornate ones if you get super lucky you can even drop master forge and demon forge versions of these Fafnir also drops curse rings which are nice for swashbuckler builds otherwise again remember accessories are very situational at tier 8 you'll probably still be raiding Baylor elite quite a lot so there's a good chance you'll be sticking with that especially if you found an ornate one but let's talk about a couple of nice weapons we can find at tier 8. First one being the Ad gear, which drops from the Heimdall boss. It's a nice one-handed weapon but it also gives us ward. The attack stat is a little bit lower to compensate for the defensive capabilities of this. You do get some nice ward on this one-handed weapon. The other one I'll mention is the Dokal for Gada. Drops from the Dokal for Lord which only appears in dungeons. This has pretty nice base attack and also causes stun fairly regularly. These are nice event raid weapons so I won't talk about them. The Excalibur which drops from the Arthas Kingdom raid is also nice if you can get your hands on a good one. Moving on to armor, the Cockmail is quite nice. It grants you immunity from petrification so it's a nice situational pickup. Otherwise I'd say for warriors there's three main options at tier 8. You have armor from King Arthas as well as Northrend armor from the Northrend Berserkers and Orichalcum armor from the Golems. These items are all good fits for your three armor slots, head, torso and legs. For our shield there's a couple of good ones to mention. The Arisen Bull shield gives some nice HP and defense on top of some ward. There's a good chance you'll pick up a nice Northrun shield as well. I, I kind of recommend just taking one to level 10. It will give you a decent amount of ward and the innate water resistance and it uses a balder material as opposed to perfect balder from Heimdall's shield which is much harder to get. So in summary at tier 8 we really want to concentrate on taking a really nice weapon to tier 10, possibly even Master Forge. And with regards to our armor slots, whatever we can get our hands on. There is a small lack of resistance for us at this tier. Remember you can always use lower tiers of gear if you need, if you're going up against a mage in a war for example. And the same goes for accessories, keep them situational, use what you need as required. At tier 9 we can really start focusing on building up our ward with Titan Guard and Cataphract spec. So one option for your shield is the Aegis which you can get from the arena, but the main one is the Fallen Shield which drops from Mammon, which you'll be dying to kill. Really nice shield, it gives you curse immunity, I would say take the first one you get to level level 10 honestly, and then pray for a legendary or ornate one to take up all the way to Demon Forge. Speaking of ward, there's only one thing to mention, and that is Apollyon. If you're still not in a kingdom by tier 9 as a warrior class, you need to get in a kingdom right now. You need to start taking down Apollyon, he drops really amazing gear. You get solid defense, quite a bit of HP, resistance to arcane, dark and holy from the 3 armor slots, but most importantly, you get a shitload of ward. You're going to need to be tapping on Polly quite often. Pray for the ornate drops, if you get legendary armor, definitely take it up to level 10. Remember, ward from different items stack multiplicatively with each other so it's really important to get that armor piece if it's legendary it'll go up to 20% odd art yeah it's really important to get your poly set up and running i'm not even going to mention anything else the other item you're going to want to pick up from apollyon is his axe the abyssal axe is the highest ward one-handed weapon in the game you'll be using this in your pvp loadouts to the end of the game definitely pick one up don't get discouraged keep smacking apollyon until you get one of these next weapon we'll talk about is the demeter's halberd which drops from the fallen demeter and I'll say this is the best god weapon for warrior classes because again you get that one-handed ward. If you're earthen faction even better. This is an amazing raiding weapon. This will definitely get you going even against the Morrigan at tier 10. The other warrior god weapons have the same attack stat. They do cause better status afflictions like paralyzed and burning but they don't have any ward. Finally we'll mention the Venin. You'll want to pick up an ornate one of these eventually from the Ratty Boy and then kill him. Once you demon forge one of these it's going to be increasing your experience game almost up to 50%. So this is going to be your main world farming weapon. So this is going to be your main experience farming weapon in the world and in dungeons especially in tier 10 
all the way to tier 11. So let's talk about accessories at tier 9. You're going to want to pick up Band of Gods as soon as possible. If you didn't know already, the Band of Gods comes from the main storyline as a quest reward. Increases your gold, orange and experience earned by 50%, just the base common quality one. Pick it up as soon as possible, stick it on, pray for a second one by completing those dungeons and you'll be raking in the orange. Other item I want to mention at tier 9 is the briny pendant you get from killing kraken bosses. This is a hard counter to the miasma spell which a lot of people use in pvp and it prevents toxic. A really solid accessory. I quite like immortal rings actually in tier 10 because your hp gets dulled so as long as you're doing boss dungeons which you will be doing at this point and into tier 10 there's a good chance you'll pick up a nice one. Just stash it, keep it in your pocket. So in summary at tier 9 you're basically going to be wanting to pound Apollyon as much as possible. Find a nice mammon shield if you can, do those boss dungeons for the demi halberd and the venom and the second band of gods. Alright, let's finally move on to tier 10. So the main tier 10 accessories drop from the same mob, the Arisen Fafnir. Best way to hunt Arisen Fafnir is have to be normal dungeons and gauntlets. It used to be quite a rare Arisen mob anyway, but then Odi added even more Arisen monsters at tier 10. So good luck in finding these, and then good luck in finding an ornate version of these. The experience gain potential from these tombs are super high. Even a common quality is going to be better than an ornate cursed monster tomb. Yeah, and at tier 10 the experience grind is super real. Picking up some nice Arisen rings are really useful as well for raiding. Let's move on to offhand. For our shield, you're going to want to find an Arisen shield from the Arisen Mammon which only spawns at the end of gauntlets. Another reason why you're going to be doing loads of dungeons at tier 10. You might also find a nice polished Aegis in tier 10 arena. It does give nice ward and some HP as well. We, we also get an upgrade to the mirror at tier 10 with the polished mirror, you get loads of mana. But due to the Siphon Ward passive ability from Gilgamesh, you probably find you don't need one of these. And you can stick with your ornate Arisen shield. Let's talk about tier 10 warrior weapons and first one we'll mention is the Arisen Demeter's Halberd. One hand is high attack, comes with wards. If you're not in the Earthen faction by this point you should have picked up Arcanic for the affinity elemental skills. Solid weapon, solid raiding weapon especially, fill it with assassin jewels. Our strength as tier 10 Gilgamesh comes from ward so the perfect setup is one handed ward weapons and the Arisen Labrys is super nice, super high ward but it's two handed so we're not going to pick this up because you really want to take advantage of the ward stacking between weapon and shield as well. The other god weapons are the same they don't have any ward the arisen dragon weapons don't have any ward on them either so in saying that the arisen demer to halberd is actually really hard to get so a nice kind of starter weapon at tier 10 you could say is the gungnir there's a good chance you'll find an ornate one of these before the halberd and it depends on your rng if you get a nice one hand in shield you'll use that if not you can use the gungnir for quite a long time let's talk about morrigan weapons the normal Neiman Havoc isn't really worth talking about, it doesn't give any ward for some reason. But the Fade Neiman Havoc is really nice. This will be our highest kind of attack stat, warrior weapon in the game, and you do get ward with it. So potentially for end game raiding, this will be your best weapon. But for PvP purposes, we're going to stick with Abyssal Axe more than likely because we're going to be using our Spiked Shield attack, especially Spiked Shield 2 and 3, and that turns the amount of ward you have into raw attack stat, which is why we're really focusing on ward weapons in tier 10. For World Farm, you're going to be using your Venom still, as long as you can kill things with it. Speaking of Morrigan, we'll talk about armor. There's nothing easily attainable in tier 10 which is better than a polygon gear for armor. The ward is just way too good. Even the Morrigan plagues gear, yes the stats are going to be higher than Apollyon but the ward is actually a little bit less. So maybe a mix of both or just whatever you can get your hands on. Fey Morrigan gear is pretty nice for defense especially against mages but it is quite rare so it might take you a while to get your hands on some. Fey gear doesn't drop as often as normal Morrigan gear that's for sure. At tier 10 you're going to be coming across a lot of people with ridiculously high ward amounts aka grumbles. The reason he has high ward is he's wearing this thing Arisen Certus Curas. Unfortunately it does come from an event raid but don't get disheartened for sure there'll be other opportunities to pick one of these up. Just remember when the opportunity comes make the most of it because the ward you get from this thing is just ridiculous. Let's move on to the head slot where we've got a couple of options. Morrigan gear obviously but also lioness crown which you get from king gradlin you'll see plenty of these in boss dungeons and out in the world yeah if you're doing boss dungeons regularly you're going to get an ornate one of these eventually it has a nice balance between defense and resistance it doesn't have any base ward but it has a lot of adornment slots you can fill with poly jewels that give you ward and we'll mention also of course the old northern crown try and find boar as soon as you reach tier 10 finish his quest remember you need normal quality crowns to hand in for a symbol of royalty you need normal ones of these and then even the common quality old northern crown i'd recommend bumping that up to demon Force. You have the base ward which you don't have on the Lioness Crown. You get mana, you get balance, defense, and resistance. And of course, once you've picked up your first one, start praying to Iron Jesus so you get a nice second one for the end of dungeons. It can happen. I've had two legendary drops to this point. You can only increase your luck by increasing your volume. So really at tier 10, we're really focusing on ward gear. If you've got high or any poly pieces, you can still use them to level 250. If you don't have any poly or Morrigan gear, get raiding. You're no use to anyone as a Gilgamesh with 10k ward in tier 10. Okay, so let's talk about adornments that we want to be using as warriors. Now for much of the early to mid game, 
you don't need to worry too much about what specific adornments you want to use. If you find yourself with two or three empty slots, just fire anything in there which is useful. A bit of attack, a bit of defense or resistance probably, a bit of HP maybe. These can come from random jewels that you get from completing dungeons. Our main reliable source of jewels are going to come later in the game from tier 7 onwards. But you know, if you're playing the game and you've got these free slots, just stick some extra attack in there on your weapons. It's not a big deal, it's going to be cheap. I think while we're on this page on Orna Guide, we've got the Assassin Jewel right here. You're going to find these from any of the Mimic type monsters. They do occasionally pop up as quest rewards as well, you definitely be wanting to complete them. These are going to be going in your raiding weapon for sure. I would say even at tier 7 and 8 when you're using like a Baylor Elite weapon, it can be worth putting 2 or 3 of these jewels in. Once you get to tier 9 and 10, you're going to be seeing a lot of Mimic type mobs, so although they are rare drops, you will start accumulating them. And as I said, you're going to be putting these in your raiding weapon, especially at tier 9 and 10 on Apolly and Morrigan and the world raid bosses as well. These are going to provide massive sources of DPS increases. The quality of these jewels don't matter, they all have the same proc chance and increasing the amount of them in your weapon is going to increase the proc chance rate. Really important jewels. Speaking of weapon jewels, right next to it we've got Arisen Teardrops. These come from Arisen Mammon. You will also start picking up non-Arisen Teardrops from Mammon at tier 9. You can see the base jewel has 1% ward, but any quality above common, so superior and above, will have 2% ward. So sticking these in your PvP weapon is going to be especially important. Technically the best jewel for maximum ward is going to be the Eye of Kerberos because it gives you base HP and mana on top of 2% ward for higher qualities. But of course they come from event raids, so keep your eye out for them. Once picking these up, you'll probably want to put them in your Abyssal Axe for maximum ward. The Jewel of Avon is actually quite nice as well, dropping from Fallen King Arthas in the same aspect to the Mammon Teardrops. As long as they're above common quality, you'll get 2% ward from them. Pretty nice decks as well, and a bit of attack and mana. Always useful. Once we pick up your Ornate Venom, we're going to stick Jewels of Growth in it. Each Jewel grants a 1% experience gain increase, and because we're going to be fully buffed going through dungeons, they shouldn't cause too much of a problem. Let's talk about Poly Jewels. Jewels of the End. These drop from Poly, really important for our armor pieces. We get base HP and mana, increasing our base ward, and then you get 2% ward on top of that with at least superior and above quality jewels. You're going to be filling all your poly pieces, all your morrigan pieces with jewels of the end. I'll finally mention jewels of the deep that drop from the kraken. It can be quite useful to stick in a second lioness crown actually. The extra mana is pretty nice in uh, hard boss mode dungeons, which you're probably going to spend a lot of time doing at tier 10 because it's super fun, gives you loads of rewards. It's really good to do with Gilgamesh, especially if you match them up with temples and shrines. Super nice. So that's it folks. That concludes part 2 of our warrior class beginner guide series in Orna. We've gone over itemization for every tier. Be sure to check out the written guide that has the quick reference pictures, the summary pictures. That will be posted on Orna Legends, link in the description below. And I hope you enjoyed watching. If you've learned something or found it useful, please consider giving us a thumbs up and a subscription. And again, thanks for watching. I'm Shabash. See you in the next one. Ciao.